Alright, how's it going everybody? This is Ismorda, and this evening I have some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links action coming your way. Um, during our uh, online card game session. Now this evening is going to be the last of my series of Yu-Gi-Oh! showing decks because I've reached the limit of decks I have that are constructed. Uh, as I've mentioned before, there's a lot of decks that I have cards for that I'm playing with if I can make a deck, and I have some decks that I'm constructing, I just, I just still have like reduced down to 20-ish cards or have tested. So this is the last two decks I have that are uh, ready to show. And that will be the Metaphys and Element Saber decks that I'm going to show you this evening. Uh, before I get started, I just want to check the Twitch feed, so you just hang on one second. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Let me uh, fix the balance of the music on this right quick. Let me uh, fix the balance of the music on this right quick. My voice is a little bit higher than what the game is doing, so it'll be hard to hear me above the music. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Give this a go. Okay, and as usual, you know the drill. I will be checking the Twitch feed if you have any comments, suggestions, questions. Um, I'll just be checking it in between when I'm talking about the strategy of something, not in the middle of my lecture. So just hang on and I'll get back with you. So, uh, and this is also cool, at the same time right now, you also have the Yu-Gi-Oh! The Yu-Gi-Oh! event. Yeah, they're all Yu-Gi-Oh! events. The Yubel event has come back, which is my favorite event. Uh, Soul Polymerization, as you see here. So if you haven't done it, highly recommend. It has a lot, a lot of story shit, which is great because I'm a huge story buff. As well as some awesome cards having to do with um, Yubel and Jaden, if interested. So check them out. A lot, a lot of good stuff here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, if you haven't seen my previous ones for this Yu-Gi-Oh! series of decks, is I'm going to show you one of my decks, and explain the strategy, show you card by card what I have and how it's used, and then show you an example play using that deck. And the reason why I'm fighting computer opponents is because I want to be able to not be restricted on time, be able to talk through what I'm doing and why. And what's cool is I can show you some of this event stuff, as I'm showing you the decks, which is pretty cool. That's what we were going to do. Alright, so. Let me get a swig of water, then I'll show you the first deck. First deck will be using. God, what's his name? Sagittarius? What's his name? And trust your destiny to my cards. Sartorius. Sartorius, I gave my Metaphys deck. Why? He may have an ability that could be useful, I don't know, I don't have any abilities yet on this character. I just like him because he sort of fits the bill. He's talking about stuff that's cosmic and destiny, and then you're doing all this meta stuff that's all this cosmic banishing, and it sort of fit the character. And that's really why I match. It has nothing to do with the ability, because see right now I don't have any abilities on the character, because I haven't unlocked anything. That's what I'm trying to get to, you see, to level 4 to, to get the first ability, right? So it, it just, um, thematically. 
Alright, so let's go to the deck. Alright, so again, this is a meta fees deck. And as usual, like I normally say is um, I'm showing you like the core engine and how I currently have to construct it. I already know a couple decks, I mean a couple cards I may add to this deck and tweak or maybe tweak ratios. And you know, what I would do if you have these cards is like use the core engine and just do whatever works for you. You may have better cards than I do or you may have certain cards that you don't own. So just, you know, you can make a deck with what you have. I just want to show you how I made this deck. Um, and that goes for all decks that I, sh I show you, obviously. Alright, so this is Metaphys. So, this is based on the archetype of creature Metaphys. That's all these different types of worms. Um, that are like uh, Celestial, and they keep like... I believe Celestial or Dark, right? Or are they all... Yeah, they're all Celestial. All Light, I mean. Um, <laughs> I call Light Celestial and Elementors, blah. Um, so, and so they're like spiritual, so that you see them like fade out into existence and come back into existence. And so that's why, and it, and it revolves around this bouncing around the banished cards, as opposed to like a zombie deck, when you, a zombie deck, not dick. You don't want that zombie dick. I mean, it's a, that's a little too Halloween for Halloween. Uh, how a zombie deck revolves around the graveyard, this re revolves around your banished deck. And remember, your banished cards are different from cards that are banished face down, as well as cards that are removed from play. They'll actually all be in the same deck, but get counted differently. So keep that in mind. This is for cards that are banished and face up. So if you have any other support cards that affect anything that's banished face up, it would probably work well in this deck. And one of those cards that works very well in this deck which I actually want to get a third one of. I'm just waiting until there's another discount on the boxes to get another one. Or an, an, another ticket. Another UR ticket that I can use on it. Is Gold Sarcophagus. Because, yes, this has a typical search function that you can banish a card and in several turns later you, you can... L let me backtrack. This allows you to take any card in your deck, banish it, and then after a couple turns you get it in your hand. Which is a really good tutor. But it's also, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, you can lose the game in three turns. So it's kind of not good by itself. But in this deck, it's great because this forces you to take any card that's Metaphys and you can banish it. And then immediately trigger the Metaphys ability because it's banished. So it allows you to immediately get any card you want in the place on the player board where you want it, which is pretty cool. Uh, which makes it super powerful. Honestly, worth a, good enough to actually have three, in my opinion. I just only own two. But I also want to keep the deck at 20 cards, so with this current ratio, I'm playing with it. I mean, maybe some of these other creatures, which I'll show you, maybe I want three, maybe I only want one, maybe I want two. I don't know. It just depends on uh, really testing out the ratios. Um, because you definitely don't want a brick, but at the same time, you want to have the utility for the engine, right? So, and like I said, this base around banishing stuff, and that stuff banished, they, you can special summon or trigger an ability, of which there's abilities all across the board. And, and the fact that basically you can do all of the rainbow of different things in this offensively by just banishing, you really don't need any other utility cards. So you'll see basically every card here with it, um, is, has the word metaphys in it. With the exception of Gold Sarcophagus, which is fantastic the way it does it describe. As well as the fact I also have some dimensional presence. Just really just to counter shit, so I'm not dependent on the combo. And the fact that it also banishes, it just fits the theme that I'm banishing everything. But obviously, like this is a card that you can swap out. And it's it's by itself a really good card. It has the banish theme as well as why it's in. Alright, so let's do it. So the first card is Metaphys Daedalus. Um, this is a really powerful card because it's a lot of stars. 2600 come out the gate, which is hard to stop. The fact that you don't have to tribute something for it. We're doing the special banish, special summon bouncing. What this allows you to do is, if it's special summoned, 
And that's true with a lot of these Metaphys. If they're special summoned by a Metaphys monster, he could do a special ability. And then they also have some other special ability that they do if the, if the, if the card is banished ever. So this one, if he's special summoned by a monster, he could banish all other face-up special summon monsters on the field. So if anything special summoned, boom, including my stuff, goes away. Which is good for me because that triggers more banishing. It's bad for the opponent because they lose all their creatures. And then if this card's banished, it can, it, you can send it back to your deck so that you can get it back. And then allows you also to banish a Menifee's card from your deck. And you think, why do you want to do that? Because if you've got a card from your deck, it then goes into the banished um, space on the field, which then will trigger Metaphys ability, right? And that's why you can see this is a SR, because it's a tutor, which is a magic term, if you don't recall, that allows you to basically take any card you want out of your deck, and that's what it does. So it's like you have three cards, so you can just fish for anything you want. As well, it's as decent when, you, when it comes out 2600. Uh, Metaphys, Nifthys, I'm not sure I'm going to butcher all these names. This one, if it's special summoned by a Metaphys, you could banish all set spells and traps. So this one banishes special summoned creatures, and this one banishes all set spells and traps. So it's like, between those two cards, you're just clearing the field of everything. And if you have any Metaphys cards that go to your that are banished, you kind of don't care because you have ways to get them out too, even if they're also spells and traps. I believe I also was able to banish this just because of the ability of one of the cards that something that's banished will come back, but let's see if I get to it. Um, and then if this card is banished, you can shuffle this banished card in your deck, add one Menifee's card to your deck from your hand. So you, this allows you to get any Menifee's card from your deck to your hand. And remember, that's anything with the word Menifees in it. So these powerful cards, which I'll go into in a sec, Menifees Dimension, Menifees Factor, ASM Menifees, all of those you can tutor for as well. And actually, because of that, that kind of makes me want to put in a third one. You know, like, I could probably have, like, one less one of these, and one more of one of these. Or maybe I'd do, like, two, one, one, have another sarcophagus, another, and another one of this creature. Just so you have a lot of ways to get whatever you want. And that goes back to the ratio stuff, but I'll leave that for testing and for you. Alright, this next one, Metaphys Tyrant Dragon. Oh, I'm sorry. And this one was 2400, so not great, but a powerful part of the engine. But, you know, it's pretty good for coming out special summon 2400. But it's not going to, you know, most likely win the game. Unless you have some other ability going on as well. Uh, Metaphys Tyrant Dragon, now this is start getting some beefies, uh, 2900 attacks is really good. Um, if it's special summoned by a Metaphys monster, his ability, or her ability, I'll say it's her since she's got some light purples, maybe. Um, it can make a second attack in a row, so if there's a whole bunch of cr uh, weaker creatures out, he can attack twice. Hopefully OTK if you're attacking really a lot weaker stuff. And then if he's she's banished, um, you could shuffle the banished card into the deck, and then special summon a Metaphys monster from your hand. So it allows you to instantly get something else out, which is cool. And I got a couple of those, a couple of those, but again, I had three of these because it's like truly a, a tutor. Um, Aloof Lupine is actually another tutor. It's just a little harder. It, it's sort of weird. it's a little harder and a little easier than Metaphys. It just works differently because Metaphys tutors if he's banished, whereas the the Aloof Alpine allows me to banish a creature in my hand, and then I can take a, a creature of the same type in my deck and banish it as well. So what this means is is if I don't have something to banish in my hand, that's a Metaphys. I can't get a Metaphys out. So it's like not a good of, of tutor, but it's great because it is a tutor. And then, it's a creature you can put down to help block, because it has 1700 attack, which is which is decent for a 4 star. So you can use it as a, a attack position blocker, if anything. 
I had two of these, as you know, I'd probably want to get three. And the reason why I have three of these, I mean, I may, two to wise, you probably only need two, but the reason why I have three is because, like, you need to have something out every turn. And then if you have too many of these, of the Metaphys creatures, you may get a situation that, what if you're starting hand, you draw four Metaphys? You're going to lose because there's no way for you to play those Metaphys. So you want to make sure it, it goes back to the ratio, right? Stuff that you can play. And that's why it's, why it's useful to have some of these traps, too, because at least I can put something down while waiting to get a card, like one of these, to play the Metaphys. Alright, so what are these other spells and traps? Um, the first one is Asymmetaphys. Uh, continuous spell that once per turn you can banish one Metaphys card from your hand, which is anything with the word Metaphys. And then you can draw a card. So if you have duplicates so you don't need it, or a card you don't need out, you can cycle it in your deck to get something else out. Well, you draw another card. And then if you use, the, and then if you have a Metaphys card um, that's been banished in this way, then during my turn and the opponent's turn, different effects happen. During my turn, all monsters on the field, including mine, lose 500 attack and defense. And then during the opponent's turn, it changes all the battle positions. So if someone's defending, I'll now be in attack position and vulnerable. Or if it's mine, if I've already attacked, I'll then be in defense position so I won't get blasted. So then, that, so you can see that how that's good with like the, the Lupine. Because I can use its ability, and then if I know it's going to die, at least it will then be in defense mode, and I won't lose life from it dying. Right. So I have a couple of those, just so if I lose one, I can still tutor and get another one. Which is some of the strategy I had for what looks like my Vampire deck. I only need one by rock two, just in case. Uh, Metaphys factor, each turn, um, and especially with this deck, because when you lose something from your graveyard, it'll go to the graveyard, whereas if it was killed and banished, I could get it back out. Right? Uh, Metaphys factor, this is a field spell. And each turn, one level five or higher Metaphys monster, which is every Metaphys monster I have, um, can actually be normal summoning without tributing. So you can just put it down directly, which is pretty awesome. Which is one of the ways to instantly bring them out. They can either come out by being special summon or by Metaphys Factor. Um, because it counts as normal summon, it just removes the requirement to tribute. But then it gets banished at the end, which I don't care because when stuff gets banished, then I can do magical shit, right? And what's cool is when I use this ability is they can't activate cards in response to the Metaphys activations. So they can respond by me attacking, but not from me activating abilities using this, which is cool. They can just go through it. So they can't do like counters and shit. Because that's the only way to stop a chain. If you had something that was like... Uh, uh, I, well, if they had something... If they played something afterwards or a, a, a chain, a counter, yeah. It'll still be first in the chain. Anyway. And then my last trap is Metaphys Dimension. This is a um, continuous trap. So you see that's another reason why you kind of don't want too many of these because you, you're limited on how much space you have on the board. You know, you, you only have room for three spells or traps and one field spell. So that means in a total, let's say in my field spell area, I already have six cards, right? You can only play three. So you don't want too many. And you, and you definitely want space to play one of these as well. So that's what I'm thinking. Like I, maybe I can get rid of one of each of these or something and then add maybe another dragon or sarcophagus. I just really like the dimensional prison. Anyway. But if you use dimension, what does this do? If your opponent special summons a monster, it allows me to then special summon one of my banished Metaphys. So if I keep cycling, having Metaphys in my Banished, I always have targets I can then instantly special summon to put on the field, which is pretty cool. And then it banishes at the end of the turn, which I don't care. It's like other Metaphys stuff, when at the end of the turn it banishes, but then when it's banished, then it triggers stuff, so it just keeps cycling. And then if I have a Metaphys card in my that's banished while this card's out, Um, I'll just read it so I, so I don't butcher the, the words. 
If, if your other Metaphuse card in its owner's possession is banished while this card is already faced up in your zone spell card. So like if, if it's a Metaphuse card that's banished, I could target one card that my opponent controls and banish it. So this allows me to blow up cards. So you see here, like, what can this deck do? It can blow up any card. I can special summon monsters. I can change battle position. I can make something weaker. And then I can get out whatever I want and put out super dudes. So like, this, this sort of reminds me of an Aeromage deck. Just by the creatures themselves, they have all the utility that they need to win the game. You have way to boost or nerf creatures. You have a way to get rid of back row. You have a way to blow up cards. It's fantastic. Um, that's what I mean. Like, since you have this utility, you may not necessarily need a dimensional prison. It's just cool because I had some filler space and I didn't want too many meta feeds that I because I didn't want a brick, and that, that you can you know you can instantly play and instantly get a, get a great block, unless someone plays a tornado or something to that effect. But yeah, this is the deck in a nutshell. It's uh, it took a while for me to figure out why would I banish, but it just it's just that engine you want you want to get rid of stuff so it triggers other stuff so then it goes back and then it triggers, keeps ping ponging back and forth. Cool. And if I find an appropriate character that I have that I can have useful ability for this, I'll definitely do it. I just really want it, wanted to try to have, personally, one deck per character, just so it's thematic that that's like their deck. So when I switch that character, I be that deck, and uh, I just don't have any cool abilities yet, and he's a cool character I didn't have a deck for, so there we go. Alright, so let's do it. So I'll save you, Bell, for last, so let's attack some dual zombies. I'm sorry, dual ghoul. They're, st they're starved duels. Let's you know, let's feed them. You will learn how foolish it is to defy your destiny. Duel, it's my turn. So normally your opponents do say something, because who I'm fighting is a dual ghoul, they just have no mind, so they just don't talk, just so you know, it's not like a glitch. But yeah, I definitely recommend this event, because it's actually my favorite event so far in uh, in this game, the Ubel event, it's fun. Alright, um, so we have a pretty average starting hand, we have some utility, and then we have a way to trigger a banish, and we have a metaphys that we want to banish. So this is actually a fortuitous opening hand. Let's go ahead and play everything. Or maybe not. Let's see here. Well, there's nothing to nerf, so there's no point in doing it. There's no point in having some account turn one necessarily because I can't rush in and do damage. So I think I'll just put everything out and lupine this guy That's a little bit. Run by hand. I activate a continuous spell. Unless... Of course, if I use this ability, I can draw a card. And then stop anything from attacking. Okay, maybe that's a better move. I'll, I'll put out the Lupine, but I won't trigger the Lupine's ability. I'll use this to send that out. That's what we're doing. Setting a card. This is so I have something in play. I shall play this. I summon a monster and attack. Oh, that just screw up. Because I think the S Metaphys. Yeah, I did. The S Metaphys. You nope. That's the meta. It's Metaphys factor that you don't. You normal summon to tribute something. This one just allows me to to. Throw crap into my into my uh, banished field. So yeah, no, we're good. You're good. I don't think it's good. Nope, we're good. I activate a continuous spell. So we banish it. 
I activated continuous. Ooh, and I think I got sarcophagus. Wow, that's amazing. Now I'll do sarcophagus too. Great. From my hand. Great. I activate a spell. I really, I mean, I like so like I really want three in this deck. Fact. I'll probably just have one less of a spell or trap, other than dark dimension, and put in a gold scrofcus because like it's that good. Because you could instantly throw something, any card you want, into your banish area, and they could pull it out. Demand what you have. It's fantastic. Um, but I think what I want, I want something so I can tutor. I mean, I want something that I can instantly special summon. Um, let's do this guy. Because the other one's going to trigger, too. Cool, cool. I end my turn. And I say, I'm not perfect with this deck, because I created this just like a few days ago, so I'm not perfect yet on like when you should play a certain thing, but like, because I'm just showing you like the general strategy on, on how the, the engine works, right? You cannot change fate. My monster's effect activates. I have nothing to target, so there's no point in doing that. I have, I have no targets. Um, something from my deck to my hand. So now I want to put down the most powerful creature I can summon, because this creature is going to let me special summon something from my hand, so I want the biggest dude possible. So I'll probably go him. I know every move you make. My monster's effect activates. Nope. <laughs> I special summon a monster. About to end your turn. Uh, well, we can't have that. Destiny laughs at Unless you. I'm not using this card correctly, it may just say that just turn it face up, because I don't see anything that would trigger. There's nothing in my banish that would work. <laughs> yeah, that was right. My turn. I, I didn't have any legal targets. Okay, cool. So what's also cool about this as Metaphys card is the penalty that it gives for attack and defense is permanent. Notice my Lupine still has 1,200 attack. It's permanent loss. Sexy. Alright, so I have no way to play this. This one that I just got. So I want to metafuse it. And you know what? This one's such a staple. I may want three. I think I only have two in this deck. Interesting. Because you summon something from your hand, and then you put it into your hand. Eh, I don't know. It's a good one, though. All right, so we're gonna do this. I activate a continuous spell. And we're gonna banish, which, I is, then gonna, a which is then gonna nerf. Yeah. Uh. Yes. My continuous trap activates. Because this has two abilities. That I can banish as something special summoned, but then also if I have something that is banished, that's metaphys, I can blow up shit. Which is cool, because I can banish mice. Well, I can only banish the opponents. 
Alright, so I don't know what creature he has, but the tr I don't know what he has in his back row, so let's get rid of the back row. And then we can play my dude. Oh, I can only play. Oh, I see. I see, I see, I see. I, I keep mistaking it as symmet. It has to be asymmetry, asymmetaphys, with um, metaphys factor, which does the normal sum without tributing. Okay, so I could tribute, but I don't think I want to. I think I'll just put him in defense mode. Cross turn the opponent's f turn. This is going to change position, so I don't need to. So I won't do that. Okay. Let's go. Time to battle. Now. My monster attacks. And remember, this can attack twice, so I can attack again. Obey your destiny. I attack you directly. Then the mouse will swing with health, which doesn't matter because it's going to change the anyway. Even you know what fate awaits you. And see, this is one reason why it's I good to have um, the dimension because yeah. right now I'm pretty vulnerable. Even though I'm going to change everything, battle position is you know I am vulnerable to attack. Right? Ha! You fool! My monster's effect activates. Um, it's the opponent's turn, and my ability hasn't triggered yet that changes battle position. So I'm going to see if this works. So if I put this in defense position, it should switch to offense. Let me make sure, because like, I know the ability triggers, but I forgot off the top of my head the timing. So let's just see. <laughs> I'm looking at the opponent's turn on the right-hand side of the dual log, and it looks like my ability hasn't triggered yet. So what, it's what, my what might happen? I oh, draw. oh, I see. If I banish something during my turn or their turn, that's when it happens. I see. So the fact that I didn't banish something during the opponent... See, this allows, what this allows me to do is if I banish something at all during their turn, I can change positions. Or if I banish something during my turn at all... Everybody loses 500. So, okay, that was the misplay. So I should, because I didn't banish something, I just put something in my hand, I should have had it in attack position. Alright, so... Activate a continuous spell. I activate a continuous spell. My continuous trap activates. Cool, cool. So you got nerf. That's okay. I got more puppies. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Summon a monster in attack position. <laughs> Let's battle. I mean, you can't stop a good puppy. I'll have both puppies. No. Have both puppies. <laughs> if you only accepted your destiny. <laughs> you strike, you can't leave a mark. Yeah, and that's the deck in a nutshell. So you can see how you know you have to be careful on the timing of certain things. I finally got I, I finally got a ability on this character. Nice. Uh, RK 
can't afford is whatever. Yeah, that's how Metafeeds works in a nutshell. You just want to be careful on the timing of cards and when you want to do certain things. As well as what Metafees creatures you want to gun for first to trigger. Most likely you want to tutor first and then put something in your hand and then special summon, right? So cool. Well, that is Sartorius. Now I'll show you. I shall aid you. Wow, the dude, which is um, what's his name? Yudo. I'm back as a dark. Reboot. That's not cool. Yu-Gi-Oh. Dual links. <laughs> Let me make sure the stream's still okay. Looks like it. Uh, okay. Oh, there's my event. Yeah, sweet, sweet gems. Okay, Come find so. Me, Jack. I believe in my car. UZ. I got you and then Do instead of UZ for Fudo. Okay. Alright, and so his deck is. Element Saber. So with uh, UZ, if I'm not butchering his name, um, I gave him the ability to tie that binds. Um, uh, because if you have multiple creatures out, then they get bigger ability, and this deck is all about flooding with having three creatures out in play. And then also, I chose this guy to dislike Sartorius because he was a person I had that didn't have a deck, and a, you know, since he goes tie, tie that bind, circle friends, and sort of fit the bill. So this is an Element Saber deck. Um, how this deck works is you're bouncing creatures from your graveyard to do stuff and you're actually changing the elemental prop the element attribute is that called attribute you're cha well so I don't miss misspeak you change the the element on every creature so every one of these element sabers has an ability that you can change at the bottom one that you could declare an, an attribute English. You could de declare one attribute in the graveyard and it becomes that on a turn. So what that allows you to do is there's certain effects in this deck that if you have different attributes in your grave, you could do different special abilities. So this deck is all about throwing these guys in your graveyard, changing abilities to allow you to trigger other stuff. As well as they all just like Metaphys, they have two abilities. These guys have the ability they can change attributes, as well as you use something else in regarding um, element savers. And as far and then I also have a, a little bit of utility at the end here as well, just general utility, which are these two cards. The fact that I can blow up creatures and then blow up back row. But again, as far as how much utility and other cards you may have to work better on this deck, it's all to you. Never ending story of the tinkering, right? Alright, so I'll do go over the lords and the spells last because you kind of have to know how they even happen. Alright, so the first one I have is Element Saber Malihu. Man, these names are like not the easiest to say. Alright, so this guy is you can send an Element Saber monster from your hand to the graveyard and then take and then target a face-up monster and change it to face-down defense position. So this basically allows you to throw something in graveyard, which you want, and then allows you also to change something to defense position so it's easier to kill. And then you can change his attribute. And he's 1900 attack, so he's really good. He's one of the most powerful staples, so that's why I have three of them out. And the fact that you can offensively make someone's, you know, easier to kill is why I have him. 
Next one is Element Saber Lapalia? Lapalila? 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 Um, same thing, change attributes of her in the grave. And also, when a spell or trap is activated, you can send an element saber from your hand to the grave to disable it. So you see a theme here, it's like you can send something to your grave to stop a uh, back row activation. You can send something to your grave to change defense position. So it's all about bounce from your grave. And 2100 defense, which is really good. Crappy attack, but has really good defense. And as you see, the combo here is if you want to do both these creatures' abilities, you can have this uh, Molhu, Molihu, target her when she's in attack position to then make her go into defense position to trigger the ability. Like if there's not nothing to target from the enemies, or you can't make somebody go in defense position, you could target her trigger her ability and his ability. Which is something I learned by playing. Um, next one here is uh, Element Saber Malo. Um, again, you can change attributes in the grave, and also you can send an Element Saber from your hand to the graveyard to then tutor any Element Saber or Elemental Lord from my deck to the grave. So if I want to throw something in the grave to get more of an element, or, th or throw something in my grave so then I can get it out of my grave. This guy's great. Plus he's also at 1700 attack, which for f 3 is actually really good. I'm sure if, I was going to say for 4, that's decent, but 3 is actually really, really good. And I have a couple of them. Uh, next one I have a couple of is Element Saber. Man, these names. I'll just say Aina. I Aina. <laughs> oh my god. Um... Same deal, she can change attributes, but also you can send an element saber from your hand to the grave to target an element saber or an elemental lord that's in my grave and special summon it. The catch is it had to have already been normal summoned when it came out. So this allows me, if I played Power Rex, which I'll go into in a sec, and he dies, I could then bring him out again. It's pretty cool. So I have a couple of her. And then I have a couple that I just have one of, only because not only do they have a, a, a other useful abilities, but they're also the weaker of the two. But I wanted to have them because they, they're all different elements. And then I could also later change the element to something else. Which allows you potentially in the grave to feed multiple different things at the same time. Like if you need all of one element or multiple different elements, you can change it up since you have a lot of variety. Alright, so her element saber Nalu. Change attributes, and then you can also send element saber monster from your hand to the grave to target an element saber or elemental lord in your grave and bring it to my hand. So she allows me to bring it to my, uh, elemental lord to my hand. She allows me a special summon if it died. And he allows me to throw something from my deck to my grid. It's a lot of cycling of the, the element sabers as well as the elemental lords. So then why do I care about elemental lords? Because this one in particular, which as you remember I had one of in my Ubel deck, is really powerful because he can blow up creatures. So when he comes out, I can blow up any creature in play of the opponents, and then we both split the the, the, uh, the their attack and take that much in damage. So if he blows up a 3,000 creature, and it, this is meant for blowing up super powerful creatures, not ones that are low enough to do some kill. That way I get rid of it, they take damage, and then swing with Power Rex, and team and OTK is the idea. And he's 2,800 attack, so he's really powerful. I've been going back and forth about having a Power Rex or maybe one uh, of the uh, Umbra Mirage only because I thought it would be useful to have two. But now that I think of this, I think it would be useful to have one of each because you can always tutor for one of these to, to get them out in your hand. And 
It also allows you, if you didn't have enough life to do his ability, you're going to kill yourself if you do it. Of course, it is optional. You don't have to do it. But, um, you know what? For shits, you know, I'll put him in. Fuck it. Let's put him in. Then I can show you him also. This dude. Of course, I guess since I can tutor, I could have 21 cards also. So I'll, I'll keep at 21 here. But, like him, he's 2800 attack. Um, and what's cool is you can also tutor for something that's 1500 or less attack. So I can tutor for another one of these dudes when he comes out. So, I mean, it's useful, but, you know. I, I just want it. I just liked him because he's utility to blow up creatures. So. So how both of these work, this one's for dark and this one's for fire, is you have to have exactly five fire or five dark in your graveyard. So and what I mean by that is you can have other elements, but for like the power Rex for just fire, you have to have exactly five. And so what's cool is with all these element sabers, they can all potentially become any element in the game. So I can change them all to become fire or change them all to become dark so then you can play play special summon it it's pretty cool and another thing to do with all these colors is make all of these different colors why would you want to do that because of palace of the elemental lords which is a field spell what this allows you to do is um, all monsters you control get attack and defense equal to the number of different attributes in your graveyard so if I have five different ones, then all my creatures get a thousand attack, which is awesome. So that's another reason why it'd be good to have a dude that you can play, because then this becomes 3,800. This guy becomes 2,900 if I have five. Really powerful stuff. And then also once per turn, you can add one element saber monster from your deck to your hand. So you can tutor and get stuff in your hand. But then you have to skip your next battle phase. But this allows you to tutor for anything you want. The actual, any card in particular. That's why I have one of every type. At least. Um, and I have many just because it allows, that way I can fill up my graveyard and they can die. And I can make sure I always have, always have something out to play. And then also once per turn, if Element Saber Monster in my hand or field sends a card from, from the hand to the grave, which is like all of their abilities, you have, they have to send something to the grave to trigger. What this allows me to do is instead of sending something from my hand to the grave, I can instead send that many, many cards from my deck to the grave. So this allows me to, for triggering these abilities, I could do it from my hand or from my deck to do it. And so I have three of those because that's such a good ability for not only the engine, but give you bonus attack. And then the last card that fits the, the, the engine is Elemental Training, which is a continuous trap. What this allows you to do is the opponent cannot target the palace of the Elemental Lords, so it protects someone from blowing up Elemental Lords' palace, which is this guy. And then also, you can tribute a monster to special summon an Elemental Saber monster from your deck with a different attribute. So if I have a, a dark, I could, tri I could tribute it to instead bring out an earth, and then I have one of these in my grave, so then he'll get 200 more attack and defense. So good stuff. And the ones that I have the most of you see here are just the ones with the best stats. So this one I had 2100 defense, which I can inflate, 1700 attack, 1800 defense. So I just had more of the most powerful ones possible, that's why they have those ratios. And then you can also send this face-up card from the field to the grave. You can get rid of elemental training altogether to discard your entire hand, which you would think is a bad thing, but you have to remember you can use this ability to load up your graveyard to then give everybody bonus attack or allow you to summon elemental lords quickly. You can then add elemental lord monsters from your grave to your hand equal to the number of cards discarded. Now this doesn't stipulate that they had to rid to come out how they're supposed to, and I haven't tested this. I don't recall. So, you know, like, um, I, God, 
I'll also call her Aina for now. Aina, it says they had to have been properly summoned, and then you can special summon. Whereas this card says... Oh, never mind, this goes to your hand. So yeah, it's going to let you do that. So this, this allows you to get an Elemental Lord from your grave. So if you tutored it to your grave, you can use this to then bring it out to your hand. Um, and then I have a couple of other utilities just for support. The fact that I want to rush in as fast as possible, I have, hey, uh, Trinati, just so I can, for one turn, get rid of their back row so I can OTK, which you can see since I inflate and can have multiple out, I, sh I possibly can do that. And then also Liberty at last so I can blow up creatures and play so then I can swing it. So these are basically when I'm, I know I have an OTK so I can swing it and do it. That's why the, these are here. And that's the deck in a nutshell. It's similar to Metaphys, that you're just bouncing stuff, but, uh, and they all have two mechanics on them to w watch out for. So, uh, again, this one's like you're, you want Elemental Sabers in your graveyard as fast as possible, so that when you have an Elemental Lord or your Palace, you can rock face. Twelve rocks in the face. Uh, I wanted to show you U Bell, but it is a crappy U Bell. It's gonna be low level. It's a different. Uh, uh, different dimension. That's that's an a five D. It's in a GX, not five DS. Well, I'll do some five DS. I'll probably just show you the fight later. Just for shits. I just want to find something that was gives me the breathing room to show you the combo without having my combo destroyed. I mean, that's something you want to prepare for, and that's why I have, you know, support cards, but I didn't want to do all traps, so I want to be able to show you how the stuff works. Fundamentally. Let's rev it up! You look like a pretty tough customer. Let's duel to find out for sure. Duel. Duel. My turn. Alright, so you see I have pretty much everything going on here. So let's go ahead and get this guy out. From my hand, I activate a field spell. Get this guy down. I set a call. I, I might as well use this ability because I want to tutor and get cards and I can't attack anyway because it's turn one so it's almost a crime to not use it. Might as well. I activate a field spell. Well, I mean, it's like you always get the attack and defense bonus, always. It's just, it also has two triggered abilities. The fact that I can have something go, go from my deck to my hand to, tr to trigger an element saber ability, or I can just tutor for an element saber, right? Both of those trick force the. I can't battle if I use it. I can't battle right now anyway. So. Let's get some dudes. Um, so actually, I think I'm gonna do this backwards. I think I'll go. I'll do him in attack mode. Okay. I summon a monster. I like to send two to my grid. Um. I activate my monster's effect. And this is another deck that I may change the, rate, the ratio of cards more to it. Maybe it makes sense to have two of every type. That way I can do every type of ability. You know what I mean? 
instead of having oh, the most power available. I don't know. It's like, it would be kind of cool to have all these abilities instead of just all this power. I just feel like if you lost cards, you can then tutor for the ones you needed. Anywho, um... A duelist's job is to give life to their cards. I end my turn. It's my turn now. Draw. I'm setting a monster so like, face down. The fact that it is normal I'm summon is 2100. It's pretty awesome. Not the only one full of surprises. Here's my face down card. I activate my continuous trap. So, uh, so like this, I could, yeah. This ability. Bounce him. You out. Okay. So you see, I, I started with 1900, monster. and then I was like, nope. And then 700, I'm not here. Uh, nope. My turn's done. Go right ahead. It's go time. My turn. I draw. <laughs> So I, I read it wrong. So you don't skip your your current turn when you use Pulse of the of Lord's activate ability. It's your next turn. So I won't be able to attack this turn. So the fact I want to attack next turn, I don't want to use its ability. I don't want to use a, tr a activated ability of the Pulse again. I just want to put stuff down. So this is a prime example. I'm gonna put this in normal summon. That way I can trigger its ability, and then I'll use a uh, uh, other shape. I'm counting on you. I summon a monster. Summon her. I think it's a she. And then I use his ability. I activate my monster's effect. Don't use that one. Send this to the grave. And switch this. Now, now 2700 and a lot of stuff in the grave and elemental training and hell it's at another 200 while right. A duelist's job is to give life to their cards. I mean, isn't that crazy? Look how quickly this guy inflated. And, I th and that's the main reason why I had s some decent power with dudes because if you just have a couple from Elemental Palace, you barely have enough to like overcome like Dark Magician and stuff like that. And then with the lords, you can combat like a. Uh, I mean, these guys can even combat um, blue eyes. But then, like the elemental lords, you can give them high enough to combat fusion summons. Really powerful deck. I end my turn. It's my turn now. So because Draw. I didn't use trigger ability, next turn I'll be able to. I'm attack. setting a monster face down. So I'll go ahead and use this ability again here because I want to keep throwing stuff in my graveyard. So if I have, I I have if I have five creatures, track. I can turn all the fire and then summon my elemental lord. That's why I'm doing that. So I want to keep him out because he's super powerful. So let's do her and then special summon. I could have two of him. Yeah, 
Yeah, I want to go for the OTK, so I'll, I'll do this. I need your help. Probably My much special power summon possible. a monster. My turn's done. It's go right my ahead. Turn. So I have five of my I graveyards, which is pretty awesome. Ooh, or I can do the shadow one. Ooh. This is good if I can, if I need to put out more dudes. So I'll do the blow up so I can see if I can do the OTK. Alright, so let's change some attributes. So I need to change four of them to fire. I activate my monster's effect. I activate my monster's effect. You see how it's nerfing because I'm having less different attributes in my grave. So it's shrinking. But if you have the right attributes, that's why I have a lot of fire and a lot of dark, then when you put those in your deck, there's less conversions, so then you can convert them to the other colors, so then their attacks will go back up. So maybe this deck is the ratio that I want. Now I think of that. I activate my monster's effect. I activate my monster's effect. I'm counting on you. I special summon a monster. I and the elemental lords also effect. grow from the palace also, which is awesome. So that you can inflate them pretty high. Not bad. I saw that coming a mile away. My monster's effect activates. You're gonna love this. Ugh. Unfortunately, how this insect deck works is blood guys when they die. If you didn't have that, it would have been no TK. So now I can inflate them back to try to add a little bit more value. Because I don't need I five fires anymore. Like turn like back to dark. Like so. Do this ability. I could do his ability too, tribute and special summon. That way I have even more power, we could do that. I activate my continuous trap. Unfortunately, that could work because it's dark. I should have made a different color. No, I can still do his ability. No, we're good. We're good. Bring you out. I know what to do. I special summon a monster. Okay, then we want to change this to. I activate my monster. Oh, no, like effect. wind. Go. Now we activate the ability. Witness the bond with my cards. And now we can see if we can't rock some face. We may we actually may still have enough for no TK if, we, if that back row doesn't stop me. Do we actually have enough? Battle. Take this! I attack with my monster! Here I go! Attack! I saw that coming a mile oh, away. Oh, gain life. What a my lucky monster's fuck. Effect activates. What a lucky fuck. Oh no, that wasn't the gain life. That was a story creature. Wow. I locked out there. He... On the other hand, didn't, did, did not look at 3,700 attack. Directly. Wham. Yeah! Campbell's. That was disappointing.
exciting, but I sure had fun. The power of my bond over yours was the determining factor. Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't need multiple element lords because you can tutor for them, so I think it will go back down to 20 guards. You can also do like one and one. Because you, also, you can also get him back out of your graveyard. Yeah, I'll, eh, I'll leave it for now. Fuck it. That's what I just do. Ooh, got more, more free cards. Nice. Free is always good. Well, cool. Well, those are the decks in the nutshell. Um, this evening I showed you Metaphys as well as Element Saber. Both actually really good decks. And um, even though like core engines, a lot of different flavors of stuff you can do to modify stuff that you, that you banish or stuff that you just need to have certain colors to do. Um, well, thanks for watching. This was actually the end, like I said, of prepared decks that I had for um, Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, there isn't going to be a online card game session next Monday because I'll, I'm going to be preparing for my board game convention. That's going to be in Madison, Wisconsin. That's Game Hole Con. That can be um, demoing Elementers Light and Dark, the beta build, showing a bunch more people. And it's a four-day convention. And it's already filled up every day, so very exciting. But I'm preparing for that, so there's not going to be a stream next Monday. Uh, the next stream, though, this week will be Wednesday, 7 p.m. PST. And that's going to be some more Heroes of the Storm. So for this, I'm going to start doing my two or three different heroes that I really want to focus on, on getting like really good at. Some of my faves. And so if you want to check out some Heroes of the Storm action, tune in then. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Again, this is Ismorta. Appreciates uh, the viewership. I'll catch you next time.